Okay, um, I think we are recording here. Basically, this is a video where I'm going to talk about an interesting encounter I had on Friday night. And I'm actually going to do a live stream on it as well because people want to know about this story so bad. If you follow me on my Have and Have Nots Instagram account, then you have already heard the story. I did a story, you know, video about it. A lot of people actually like the story at my expense, but a lot of people have been commenting. It's like, yo, you have a way of storytelling. You sound motorcycles outside. Um, you have a great way of storytelling. Uh, you're honest and it's adorable. So I might be doing another channel about that. But in any case, uh, Friday was a very interesting day. Long story short. And when you hear that, you know, a long story is about to happen. There was a girl that used to live a few buildings down from me in the apartment complex. We used to hang out. We were never like a couple, but we, you know, hung out a lot. And um, she moved away. We kind of had a falling out and she moved away. And for whatever reason, I had been thinking about this girl a lot. Like over the past couple of weeks, I th no, like three nights in a row, I would just like have dreams about her. And I'm like, we're not Facebook friends anymore. We don't follow each other on social media. We haven't even seen each other in like almost two years or even spoke. I think I did try to hit her up like sometime last year, but it pretty much was like, yeah, we can't keep doing this. I'm not interested. Look, there was a time where I was really interested in you, but I'm not anymore. And for me, that's like the headshot. It's like whenever a girl says, I'm not into you, I'm like, well, damn. So, yeah. So, last week, if you have been keeping up with my post and everything, you know I've had a lot of technical issues. Like, for one, one of my live streams got taken down for copyright by Tyler Perry Studios for nothing like my live streams typically are me sitting like this in front of my camera talking with no content so for whatever reason it took three days but the copyright strike was removed but in any case this entire week i couldn't live stream my laptop for whatever reason stopped working properly i'm like every time it's around tax season that's when stuff decides to break down and i knew something like i do i do not want to invest like 300 dollars in a new laptop I went to the computer shop across the street because I thought maybe my fan needed to be cleaned because of dust and whatnot. I'm rushing to leave my apartment to get to my car because it's like four o'clock, but the place closed at five and I was hoping to get there quickly so maybe they can fix it on the spot or um, I could avoid heavy traffic because of five o'clock traffic and school buses. I'm rushing because my window, I usually park my car right here. I'm on the first floor. The balcony's right there, the patio. So I could put groceries right over there. So I'm rushing out of the door. And I see like three cars, you know, pulling into the parking lot. One of the cars has that same girl. We lock eyes for like three seconds, but then I hop in my car and leave. Yeah. So after I dreamt about it like three times, I wanted to message this girl, but I went on Facebook after a week of turmoil of not wanting to do it. I went to her page, I was about to cave in, but then I saw her cover photo, her and the boy, you know, him kissing her on the cheek, her relationship status for everybody to see. And I'm like, look, Jeremy, you're better than this. You don't need to, you know, hit up somebody who's most likely just gonna brush you off or ignore you. So I didn't do it. That happened 36 hours before I saw her in the parking lot. So I hopped in my car and I was gone. Three days later, uh, Friday actually so this happened Tuesday night I go to my mailbox and then I hear a voice like hey Jeremy I turn around and it's her and apparently she's seen me around a lot because remember she has moved away from here so I didn't think I would ever see her again and uh, I'm like oh that's cool it's like um so yeah I still live here me and my roommate deciding where if we want to stay for a fifth year and she's like oh yeah because I I'm usually in your neck of the woods a lot too I'm like oh did you move back oh no it's like oh, okay yeah, because my boyfriend actually lives a couple buildings down for you. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And that was pretty much it. That was like just small talk. Really, I'm glad the conversation happened just because um, if we really do run into each other a lot, at least it won't be awkward or like a force like I'm going to avoid her because she's avoiding me. So, yeah, that was pretty random. So, long story short, no love lost there. That was just whatever. Told my roommate about it because he knows the girl too. And... He said it. He's like a sarcastic person. He, he's the that's what she said kind of guy. That's what, you know, he always throws that into a conversation. He's like, man, that sucks. It's like right when you think that she's here to see you, she's going a few doors down to get some 
I'm like, wow, wow, thank you for that. Thank you for that confidence booster. So it's like almost 10 o'clock, I decide. I've been cooped up in my room too long. Remember with the laptop stuff, my battery had just come in that night. And I'm like, uh, you know what? Let me go out and get a few things, come back, then I'll get started on some work. And I know it's five minutes in, guys. This is how I tell stories. Everything, there are a lot of details I need to go over. So I decided to go to Target because it's like 10 o'clock, no traffic. Uh, Target closed at 11. There shouldn't be a lot of people there, you know? I just go in, browse around, take my time. Go into Target. And they actually put a uh, Starbucks right there when you walk in. I walk into the store and I see someone looking at me and smiling and I'm like, oh my God. So this is the part of the video where I talk about my crush crush. And I'm not going to say a name. And I don't, be I don't believe this particular female is subscribed to my YouTube channel, so she'll never see this. <laughs> uh, unless somebody that I know is watching this video then shares it saying, oh, Jeremy has a crush, and then she sees the video and then realizes that it's her. So I'm pretty much shooting myself in the foot. Oh, well. But anyway, so I walk in and I see her, and she comes up to me and we talk for a good five minutes. First of all, guys, I ain't gonna lie. She is gorgeous, but it's more than that. She's somebody I used to work with. Um, we started talking around last March, you know, when I say talking, you know, just messaging each other. Honestly, I think she had like an Instagram story or a post or something. I said something sarcastic and then that like sparked a few more jokes and we started talking. Keep in mind, I had worked at this call center for three years. I have a personal, this is a personal policy not to date coworkers because to me personally, it gets really awkward if it doesn't work out and then you have to see this person every day, not to mention office gossip. Not to, I mean, on top of that, I have seen that happen a lot at this particular job. Oh, I've seen couples get married, you know, couples who started there at different times or even together. They started going out and then they eventually got hitched and that was great. But then there are other stories where drama ensued and I've never been a part of a office gossip. The only office gossip regarding my call center job was being off the clock and talking with people about things we didn't like about the job. So I always kept, I went into work, went to my cubicle, did my job. Yeah, there are some people I talk with on a frequently or a frequent level. Some like this particular girl, you know, we talk like about, you know, work stuff and how are you doing and things like that. But this was like the first time I was getting to know her. And I'm actually smiling. I'm not going to lie. After we finished talking, I was smiling the entire time, which I rarely do. But let me tell you, the first thing she said to me when I w walked into the um, store was, oh, my gosh, here you are. You're finally outside of your apartment. I'm like, OK, yeah, all right. I see how it is. But, yeah, everybody knows I, re I rarely go out. But uh, see, I'm smiling thinking about it because, guys, she is really amazing. So, um, you know, it was just catching up. Um, you know, how are things going with the channel and whatnot? And I just like it because she really, you know, sounded interested in what I was doing. And she knows that I love Welcher Sparkling. Like, I would get a bottle now, but it's all the way in the mini fridge. I don't feel like walking that far. <laughs> and um, she just became an aunt, so that's pretty cool. Just asked her about that, how it feels. And, uh, you know, she's gearing up for a busy weekend. She, you know, was saying she has a big paper to write, planning a friend's baby shower and whatnot. So overall, you know, I just had a good time talking with her. She, I don't know, I kept my composure. Keep in mind, like, it was like God saying, you know what, Jeremy, I'm going to do you one over. You know, the fact that you were thinking about this other girl and then you decided not to message her and then you saw her at the mailbox, she came up to you and I had a little, I had a little, you know, hey, God's humor, right? You know, hey, I just played one over on you. So let me give you a gift. You walk into Target and I want to show you a crush. And I handled it like a champ. I thought I thought I did well. Because the last time I saw her was in September because um, I had a gift box I put together for her birthday. And it was cool. I liked it. I mean, I, I mean, she liked it too, but that was the last time I saw her. And um, I was really nervous because I remember walking her to a car and I went in for a hug. And it was one of those awkward moments where, oh, snap, I'm doing a two-arm. She's giving me a one-arm. Dang it. I went too far. I shouldn't have done that. And I felt like I messed up. But we've been talking just as friends ever since. So I've never said that I like her more than a friend, which I actually do. But I don't know. I'm just like very nervous about it. So any case, um, 
I, it's like, oh, I don't want to hold you up from getting your grape juice because she knows like the water sparkling. So I walk off and, you know, that was it. I see like three other people I know in the store. Like uh, one guy, I haven't seen him since college. We spoke for like 20 minutes. I met his wife. Uh, we're supposed to hang out within the next week or so. Great guy, great guy. Uh, I saw another person who I used to be on the dorms with. I saw a girl from my hometown. No, yeah, I saw a girl from my hometown. She's moved up here, got married too. That's great. And um, here we get to the embarrassing part. We got to the story about that one girl where it's like, oh, okay. Then we get to the, oh man, I saw my crush. Saw some other people I know. And here we get to the super embarrassing part. You know that feeling where you are, you see somebody in a store and then you walk off because the conversation's over. Then you see them again and it's like, oh, you're still here, that awkward scenario. So my crush was in the store with another friend. You know, I, I guess both girls there planning for the shower thing, baby shower thing. Um, I see her friend like standing outside of an aisle. I'm like, oh, snap. I don't want to go over there to like have a second encounter and be awkward. So they're standing like one aisle over from where my juice is that I need to get. So I decide, okay, I'm going to be slick. I'm going to go through the back way of the aisle, get my juice, and come out of the other end so they don't see me. I get my juice. I come out of the end of the aisle. And my shoulder grazed, and I'm talking like grazed, like barely tapped. It was a huge bag of Doritos, uh, the family size, and the bag fell on the ground. Here's the thing, though. Number one, I thought I was exiting the aisle where there was no one there. Number two, I'm like, oh, snap, let me try to catch this bag. And here's where I messed up. Have you ever dropped something and you you could have just let it fall, pick it up and walked off? I believe I attempted to go like catch it. I'm trying to find if I have like a light object or a bag or something. Oh, here we go. Computer wipes. It's like the bag fell and I'll be like, like a hot potato. Oh, that's what happened. So I'm staring at the bag like fail moment. I get the bag and I try to put it back on the shelf. And here's the reason the bag fell. The shelf was literally packed with Doritos. So even the, like even if you took one out, it would have been like a vending machine. It would have fell off. It took a while to like stuff the bag back because every time I put it in, it would pop out. So I put the bag back. And at the end of it, for whatever reason, I decided to just like pat the bag. Like, okay, good job. In the corner of my eye, I see her standing there, and I'm like, freak. So I do not turn around. I do not acknowledge that there's anybody behind me. I, I booked it. So that actually, I tried to avoid an embarrassing moment. And I actually, no, no, I, have, I tried to avoid an awkward moment. And I think I created an even more embarrassing moment. So, yeah. So that cool, maybe that smooth persona I might have had at the front door where I saw her, I feel like I lost like 50,000 points with that. Thankfully, it was not glass. It was just a bag of chips. But at the end of the day, that was embarrassing. I don't know if I can live that down. I don't even know if that's going to come up in conversation because obviously, I don't know if she would bring that up to me because I sure as heck wouldn't bring it up to her unless she watches this video and then realizes I'm talking about her. Yeah, you know what? There we go. Life happens. So that was my embarrassing story. But if you saw my Instagram live where I, I mean, my Instagram story where I talked about it, I'm in tears from laughing at the situation because honestly, it was pretty funny. So, but at my expense. So that was my tale of what happened when I um saw my crush in Target. But again, I'm not saying that, oh my gosh, it's like, I should tell her it's one of those I'm glad we got to know each other over the past year. I'm glad we're friends. So it's one of those situations where, okay, do I say something? And then if she doesn't have any kind of feelings and then that makes the friendship awkward because it's kind of weird. I actually do like her a lot, but I don't really know if she's into me because, you know, maybe because I'm younger, I don't know, but uh, we shall see. Yeah. All right, well, that's my story. Um, if you have any embarrassing tales, let me know. And actually, I'm actually glad that it's a story I can laugh at as opposed to a heartbreak tale like, you know, earlier this year. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, I'm actually thinking about doing another YouTube channel where I talk about this kind of stuff. 
not just stories like this, but just life stuff that, I, that happens to me, my thoughts on different things, just to spice things up. So, yeah, uh, have a laugh at my expense. I don't mind because I was thinking to myself, well, Thursday night, I was laughing my head off at the Tyler Perry Medea family funeral. Friday night, I was laughing and also just embarrassed about what happened with some chips. And what really hurt is because I'm a picky eater. Nacho Doritos, Nacho Cheese Doritos, those are the only Doritos I eat. If it was a bag of the spicy ones, I wouldn't care. But to be betrayed by the one flavor of Doritos I actually eat, it's a darn shame. So, there we go. All right, well, thanks for listening to my story. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll talk to you soon.